morning. Good morning. My name is Holly Herrera. I am the board administrator for today's work session, Thursday, March 7, 2024. This meeting is being recorded. Chair Stevens, we are ready to begin. Okay, thank you very much. I'm just trying to pull up my agenda here. All right. Okay, um, this is a work session for the board um, with the agency staff. Attendees from the public are welcome to observe. The chat function as well as the attendee cameras and microphones will be turned off. If you would like to submit public comment, please do that uh, through the website for our April 4th, 2024 board meeting. And with that, I'll turn it back over to you, Holly, for a roll call. So, Chair Catherine Stevens. Present. Chair Lucas. Present. Steve Magie. You may be showing up a little bit late. Hey, uh, Bill Brock. Here. And uh, Jim Knight. Here. In the nick of time. <laughs> and then Jeff Pritcher. I don't see Jeff coming in yet. So uh, roll call is complete. Okay, yeah. thank you. Um, this work session, uh, we asked uh, staff to bring back a presentation about um, planning and projects and how, how that process works uh, through ODAB. And so, Mr. Thomas, take it away. Good morning and thank you. Let me see if I can share the screen here. Okay. So yeah, good morning. Thank you for um, everyone for being here. And I will start with the planning programs presentation. And this is the first one I've I've done for the board. So I did try to keep it pretty succinct. Uh, you know, please let me know if there's anything missing, any questions, anything along the, the slides here, and uh, I'll answer the best I can, or I will follow up with an email. <laughs> so, so the planning programs here at the Department of Aviation are quite extensive. Um, these are most, but not all. So we have our planning and land use, of course, which includes our tall structure review and our Oregon Aviation Plan. We have our payment evaluation program, which the evaluation reports from that eventually goes into our payment maintenance program throughout the state. And I'll go into a little bit more detail on each of these as we move along. We have our statewide capital improvement program, our FAA airport improvement programs, or AIP projects. And then we have our, our ASAP grant program, so CORE and SOAR. Uh, we used to have a program called ROAR for rural, rural airports, but that is no longer. And uh, more recently, and, and something we are in, currently in transition on, is our procurement and contracts. So in the past, we have then the contract administration for our projects. We are now in the process of moving procurement into the agency as well. And our same goes with our administrative rules. So in the past, um, ODOT had provided our, our coordination of our OARs, and that's transitioning back, or actually, I guess, has transitioned back to the Department of Aviation here a couple of months ago. Uh, Connect Organ coordination, and then legislative government and external relations. And something that's not on here, um, but it is something that that myself and Kenji have been spending a lot of time on is our, you know, AAM and UAS or advanced aviation. And um, we don't quite have, you know, an official uh, position or, or person for that. So it, that's kind of something that that Kenji and I are, are taking lead on. And here's some general planning updates. So um, some of you may have seen this if you attended OWAMA. I don't know if there was anybody on the board that did um, this time around, but so we've had a couple of revisions of our planning program area position. So in the past, or what was that? I was just saying Jeff Richard is now. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, in the past we had, part of our ASAP programs, we had uh, two grant coordinators that they're they were almost entirely 100% focused on uh, the ASAP grants. And we have recently modified one of those positions to include the pavement maintenance and pavement evaluation program coordination roles. And that is um, something that Andrea has currently 
uh, recently moved into. And then what the other position has been modified to include procurement and contract administration. So here on the right hand side of the slide, you can kind of see a, a you know, general breakdown of what each of these positions do. So our two coordinators, our planner, uh, Brandon Pike, and then myself. So land use and tall structures. So this is something that uh, Brandon and I do, primarily Brandon at the moment. He is the, the expert on our land use and tall structure review. So airport planning and land use for state owned airports and coordination with all 97 public use airports within Oregon, um, which includes land use compatibility requirements and an airspace analysis when building or modifying structures in or near airports to verify airspace safety. Continued, um, something that Brandon and I have recently joined in the past uh, couple of months here is the Department of Land Conservation and Development, or DLCD, has initiated and led a multi-state agency land use network, which basically gets together, um, ideally, all of the land use staff and representation from different agencies across the state. And so that is currently led by DLCD, along with uh, the Department of Agriculture. And they're working to ensure alignment and consistency for land use policy. What was that? Working together to uh, ensure less, less alignment and consistency for land use policy across the state. Our first meeting was back in December 12, 2023. Our next meeting is actually next Tuesday, uh, March 12th. The Pavement Evaluation Program, or PEP, evaluates payment conditions at public use NPS airports uh, by region on a rotational cycle. So the data from these PEP reporting is then used in the Pavement Maintenance Program, or PMP, to plan and execute projects as applicable across the state throughout those regions. And for your reference, um, in 2023, there was quite a few report PEP reports that were done. And here's just you know a list of all of the uh, the, the airports that those were done at. And if anybody would like to see you know the individual reports, just please feel free to reach out to myself or Andrea, and we can email the reports as requested. Okay, the maintenance program PMP. So PMP evaluates reports that were provided by PEP to establish a pavement maintenance schedule across the, the state. We then process procurement contracts ex executing those projects to provide the maintenance needs by region. On the schedule for this year is region three and four, um, which is more or less kind of central and, and north or northeast and eastern Oregon. And those will be we, we've those will be happening here in kind of this spring and summer. So those should be completed by the end of the summer, early fall. And we are working with our engineers to get the region one inspections uh, scheduled before the end of the year as well. Or program overview. Or ASAP, I should that should have been titled. <laughs> the Aviation System Action Program ASAP was created by House Bill 2075, which was a, a bill in 2015 and included CORE, SOAR, and ROAR. In 2021, House Bill 2434 made CORE and SOAR permanent and closed the ROAR program. CORE grant funding is applicable toward airport improvement related projects at Oregon's 97 public use airports and SOAR specific toward our state owned and operated airport improvement projects. So the grant, the core grant cycle timeline, you see the grant applications that generally happens in the fall, kind of October, November. We then have an internal review and ACT or the Aviation Committee on Transportation Outreach, ARC review and scoring, ARC meetings and recommendations to the Aviation Board. And then the board 
reviews and awards. And then finally, the award notification. And so currently where we're at in our, our last or most recent cycle is that the board has reviewed and selected which grants are awarded. And we have notified the grantees that they are, their grants are available to execute as, as they need to. And so we've had about four that have executed and uh, that still leaves us with a, you know, quite a few that are still on the schedule to happen over the next few months here. Some general or recent uh, core updates. So in the past, our amendments had quite a bit of back and forth. When an amendment was needed for a grant, um, we've removed the change order request form that that saves the grantees and ODAP staff uh, just several steps, you know, back and forth communication via email. We have updated our milestone progress reports or our MPRs on our, our current most recent cycle to limit the grants to only four MPRs. So each one, as you see on the screen, would be 25, 50, 75, and 100. And then we could add a, an additional MPR if it is an FAA project to confirm that we have received all the FAA documentation. And we did this just because in the the, the past, we've had several grants that have had you know, upwards of 15, 16 milestones. And the way that our, our rules are currently listed is anytime a single milestone is near or past its estimated completion date, it would require an amendment. So th this just helps you know, with a lot of the kind of uh, the busy work that grantees and, and ODAP staff are having to do to, to do probably excessive amendments when if we just limit this down, this saves everybody a lot of time. And the notices that go out to our grantees now include due dates and progression percentages. It's just a useful or um, you know nice uh, reference point to have. And we have been working on trying to streamline our our grant execution um, in a timely manner. So we've we've had some you know grants that maybe are awarded and. It's three, six months out and they, they still had not been executed and or we have a grant that had been executed, but there wasn't any noticeable progress after a few months. So we're working on how to best, uh, you know, stay on top of that and streamline that and, and being more consistent and, and uh, on, you know, if, if there's no progress within a certain amount of time, we will be reaching out to the grantee to see whether or not it's appropriate to close the grant. And then for our future grants, we are looking at a revision to the ARC process to match something that's more similar to how actually Connect Organ does it now, to where the grantees would have an opportunity to present their project to the ARC cohorts. Don't know exactly what that'll look like yet. Maybe it'll be something limited to 90 seconds or two minutes or three minutes, but the grantees then could, could have that opportunity to to have a presentation and talk about the importance of their project and, and why they feel that um, it should have you know, a priority on the list. For administrative rules for OER, something else that we're working on quite extensively here in our ASAP team, and this has turned out to be a little bit larger of a, a project that we than we had initially anticipated, but so our OER is chapter 738, they have transitioned from our from the Oregon Department of Transportation to to us, the Department of Aviation, and we are reviewing 738-124, which is the ASAP rules section or division. Reviewing that along with the Department of Justice to provide clarification and simplification of our program rules, and um, we will be reaching out to the board and, and really other interested parties on setting up a rules advisory committee. You know, before anything is is permanent, of course, we're working on providing a draft, so we'll we'll have a, a good foundation to start on. Procurement contract administration. So again, our, our procurement contract administration is currently in the process of transitioning from ODOT to, to the Department of Aviation. We had initially planned that transition to happen April 1st, but I think just because of the, you know, the turnaround time scheduling, we, we've recently had our, our full 
team again. We'll likely need to extend that by about three months. Um, we we have that agreement on a on a quarterly basis with ODOT, and as we have been working through this transition, there was an agreement that if we needed to extend that, we could. We just want to ensure that we have, of course, all of the training and adequate certification and whatnot to best to best have ourselves set up for a good starting point, a good foundation when that does come back in house, and that provides an opportunity for quicker turnaround time for our projects, direct line of communication and, you know, internally with our own team and direct line when we're working with our, our contractors and engineers. Legislative. So currently, um, the only thing we had in this last legislative session was a pretty minor statutory amendment request. Um, current, uh, our current statute limits our ASAP grants to only for priority one ASAP grants to only be applicable towards FAA AIP or airport improvement project grants. Um, as many of you know, we've, airports have also had access to BIL grants and the FAA could potentially have other grant opportunities in the future. And so we, we requested that that statute instead of saying FAA AIP, it is just FAA grant. So it would still be limited to FAA, not all federal, just FAA only, and any other grants that the FAA may offer to airport specific projects in the future. And any questions? That is it. Did I cover everything that everybody was looking for? Yeah, I think so. Thanks, Alex. That was informative. Um, maybe you can tell us kind of, uh, that's a lot of program areas. Um, so maybe you can tell us kind of how the team works together to keep on top of all that, because it is quite a lot to, to track on. It is, it is quite a lot. And several of these kind of new program areas, like the, the procurement and contracting and the administrative rules, is fairly new. Um, I am, you know, we are very fortunate to where we have a great team. We do recently have, we recently have filled our entire team. We're back to a full team between Andrea, Ermi, Brandon, and myself. And it is a lot of work, but it is something that, um, you know, with Director Kenji Sugahara, one of his primary goals when he started was really focusing on how to streamline some of our processes, and that's something that that we've been really working on, on just how to, how to keep our calendars and how to keep our to-do lists and our tasks and everything. What are the priorities and how to really focus on just making sure we get things done in a timely manner. And it's, yeah, <laughs> I, I feel like we're, I'm confident that we are, we are staying on top of all these things. It is a lot, it has been a lot of training and, and, and you know, internal meetings and, and whatnot over the past several months, but I'm confident moving forward that once some of these things transition in-house, we'll we we'll have a great team and we'll be, we'll have a strong foundation. Well, and I know I can tell the difference in the, uh, the core grant program process. It's definitely been streamlined and this is easier uh, user friendly for the airports who are applying for those grants. So I appreciate that. I, um, Chair Stephen, I'd just like to add, I, I like the idea in the future of uh, opportunities for a grant uh, <clears throat> for those seeking grants to be able to do their presentation. I think you're right, keeping it short, but um, that may help the arcs uh, quite a bit there with their decision making and give uh, give us some better <clears throat> recommendations in the long run. So I, I like that change uh, that you all are proposing. Thank you, good to hear. Um, Alex, I just wanted to add in also 
Uh, it's really great to see the open communication with DLCD, and I'm glad to see that you guys will be having regular meetings with them, and um, that's just going to help your department in so many ways. So thank you for making that a, a, a priority and taking that initiative. Thank you. Appreciate it. I will request since nobody else is speaking up. Um, I was looking through our, the lovely website and I don't see an update with the new uh, PEP PMP where it's been shifted from three regions into four. And so if that is something um, I would personally like, so if you could email that out to us uh, board members, but also perhaps get a map up on the website just because with that shift, it's hard to remember who's in which group now. Okay, yeah, Andrew and I can reach out to you and follow up with that. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, Kenji, I don't know if you have any thoughts on, on the streamlining efforts, but it seems to be effective. Yeah, it's a uh, it, the transition to uh, well, thank you, Chair Stevens. The uh, the transition time is going to take a little bit because, of course, as uh, Alex mentioned, there is a training period. And what, one of the things that we want to make sure is that th there there have been issues in the past with, with procurement and contracting uh, when we did have it in-house. And we want to make sure that we put in the right controls to make sure that things don't go sideways on us. So it's, it's just slowly getting into it and making sure that we have the support from ODOT when, when it's needed, right? Because it, it it is new. It is something that we're 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 trying out, and if it if it works, it's going to end up with significant time uh, uh, money savings, so budget savings, as well as uh, decreasing the time for uh, a lot of e execution, in essence. Because for a lot of the contracting pieces, we put it out to ODOT. In comparison to some of the large projects you see over at the department ODOT, ours are tiny, so they tend to drop down toward the bottom of the bucket, which is problematic for us because, well, we need we need to execute on these things, and so there there's a lot of benefits to it, but we want to make sure that we go about it the right way. And uh, Alex and his team uh, have shown the willingness, and I think that the ability to to really execute on all the program areas that you see right there. Uh, Alex and I come from the same mold in terms of we are very efficiency motivated as well uh, at the same time making sure that we're following all the the regulatory uh, requirements as well. So I'm confident and I, 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 I you're going to see the way that the agency operates changes over time to make it easier, more customer centric and uh, more pleasant experience as well. So thank you. All right, very good. Any other questions, comments? I, I know we had uh, initially we had some other items on this work session, but we postponed those just to um, council not available to do some of our uh, required trainings and that kind of thing. So, um, so it may be a very short meeting unless anybody has any other uh, questions or comments. Go ahead, Jim. I just want to tell Alex, thank you very much for taking such complicated, complex issues and really uh, bringing it back to this board uh, in a concise manner that really does make sense. And, um, you know, you don't you don't prolong the misery uh, going into the details. <laughs> so I really appreciate that. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Um, I just one comment from my uh, for me. Um, I had the opportunity to accompany Kenji and Alex uh, last week to DC for the Niseo legislative uh, conference and meetings. Uh, it was a great opportunity. Uh, I don't know in future years if other board members want to go. Um, I don't think there were many other agencies that had brought along their board uh, a board member, so it was actually really nice to see. Uh, the conversation and discussion. Uh, we certainly had a great presentation from the Associate Administrator for Airports from the FAA to kind of get Shanetta's perspective on uh, the role that state aviation has uh, and her priorities. It was great to hear about a few programs that many of us are concerned about, uh, whether we talk about uh, 
you know, EV toll uh, in the future there. Certainly some of the planning associated with that. Uh, some of the other things like uh, the EGLE program and the FAA's march towards unleaded aviation fuels, towards the concerns about PFAS and, and chemical and the switch out for airports for uh, firefighting foam. So it was really great. And to see the other states kind of um, and look at aviation from the state perspective and, and level of priorities. Everybody has their <coughs> perspective, whether you're from a large airport, small airport, consultant, some other part of the aviation industry, but to see it from the broader perspective of the states uh, and their directors was really great. So uh, thank you for the invite. I had a great time and a uh, great group of speakers and uh, Maceo is a great organization there. I wanted to add on, um, I did post uh, some photos that Kenji took uh, from Maceo and Steven, maybe you're in that, uh, along with Alex and Kenji. And thank you for that. Um, I posted on our Instagram, which our Instagram account is OR Aviation. You guys want to check that out? Uh, Chair Stevens, if I could uh, make a mention real quick. Um, Holly has restarted our social media presence, so you'll start seeing more, more pictures, more communication coming out from the, those channels as well. So it'll be accessible to a larger audience than we traditionally have through Gov Delivery and just our website. So uh, I don't think we're going to be able to use TikTok because it's banned, <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We, we, we won't be able to use TikTok. But, but um, we can use Snapchat though, right? We're waiting for that uh, to be approved. Yes. So we can uh, draw in uh, all different um, age groups. I, I think we're good not not using TikTok. But. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like Jeff has a question. Go ahead. Uh, yes, good morning, uh, Chair Stevens. Uh, curious to know, Kenji, um, are you going to have a are we going to have a presence on um, LinkedIn for ODAV um, in terms of how that's sort of a, a professional environment? Uh, is that being looked at or are there just so many options we're going to just stick to one or two? Yeah, yeah I think it's a great idea. Uh, uh, Holly, if you want to look into it, uh, LinkedIn is a great place to have an organization page. So uh, we, we can do that. And if yes, you need help, um, just let me know. Yeah, I, I was looking into that and with Kristen, and um, it looks like we have our LinkedIn, but we're just trying to figure out uh, the username, password. It has been years, I guess. So the last person who probably has that login, the email is probably no longer valid. And uh, so we're going to try to just uh, have them uh, delete it as a duplicate and start all over. Okay. But yes, I was looking into LinkedIn. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I'll keep you guys yeah. updated. Thank you. And then one thing I did want to mention uh, uh, before the end is we had, uh, we had the opportunity to meet with Administrator Whitaker of the FAA as well. So that was a fantastic opportunity. Steve, unfortunately, you weren't uh, be able to make that that portion of the NACEO conference. Uh, but I, I definitely would like to uh, take more board members along. I know this fall, uh, the the organization is thinking of having a track for board members so that might create an opportunity uh as well as they're creating new membership uh, type for airports that they're slowly rolling out they have taken on a couple states but they're they're also looking at other states as well so that it's a very valuable resource in terms of they uh, track the federal legislation as well as things that are going up on the hill and they provide a newsletter. So it's a great opportunity for uh, for smaller airports to get involved and the larger airports as well, uh, just to get uh, to supplement some of the information avenues that they, they, uh, that folks have. So, yep, thank you. Hey, very good. Um, I was just gonna let folks know, so it looks like we're getting close to an FAA extension, so that's good. Sending so being sent to the White House for a signature that makes all of our lives a whole lot easier. <laughs> um, and then um, the minibus also looks like it is progressing, so that's FAA reauthorization, um, not just an extension. So fingers crossed that um, we will actually get that action taken as well. Any other questions, comments? 
Otherwise, we'll give you some time back in your day. <laughs> all right, thank you so much. I appreciate um, all of your efforts, Alex, Kenji, um, staff. So, and uh, we will see everybody um, for the next board meeting um, that will be April 4th held at the Independence State Airport. Perfect, thank you. All right. See you all then. Have a, have a good rest of your week, everybody. Has this meeting uh, been adjourned? Yes. <laughs> Thanks I'm adjourning the meeting. There you go, Holly. Thanks for keeping us honest. <laughs> Thank you for the record. <laughs> Thank you. This meeting uh, recording has ended.